David DeFore is a former State Department official. He was a foreign policy advisor during the 2008 presidential campaign to candidate Barack Obama. David, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So I think it's, let's just begin at the Susan Rice story. Very telling that she would go on television just recently and lie right to camera and say, I knew nothing about that. Why would she lie about that? I don't know why she would lie about that, and we don't know that she lied. And perhaps some of what she was asked to talk about was classified. We know she can't talk about that. But I think it's helpful to your audience to break down in phases what happened here and look at the legality of each thing. So there was surveillance of Russian agents, including the Russian ambassador. That's okay. In fact, that's what the U.S. is supposed to do, surveil Russia. They surveil us, they try to get information about us, we try to get information about them. Now, secondly, there were certain U.S. citizens caught up in that surveillance. There was incidental collection of their conversations or discussions about them. That includes some Trump campaign officials. That's okay, too. That's going to happen. Now, they're supposed to remain masked. In this case, they were unmasked, and we know from the story today that Susan Rice requested the unmasking of some of them. Now, you have to look at what are the criteria for unmasking, and there are two basic criteria. One, do you need to know the name of the U.S. citizen in order, to, in order to understand the intelligence? Or two, does the intelligence suggest that the U.S. citizen may be involved in some criminal activity? Now, we know now from Director Comey of the FBI that there's an ongoing criminal investigation of the Trump campaign and the cooperation, potential cooperation, between Trump officials and Russia. So therefore, there could be a very good reason for this unmasking there might we need be. to find out. There, there might be. Is there a good reason for the spying that had nothing to do with the Russia investigation, which we now know encompassed an awful lot of surveillance of apparently Trump himself and his associates? What could possibly be the justification for that during a presidential campaign? Well, we don't know that. That has not come out. No one has suggested well, actually, Fox, that. Fox News is reporting that, that a lot of this material had nothing at all to do with that Russia investigation. So again, in the middle of a presidential campaign, when you have one party which is seeking to defeat another party, for the party in power to use its intel gathering capacity against the other party seems way out of bounds, legal or not, doesn't it? Tucker, we have to look at each surveillance and the communication that happened in that surveillance. Now, surveillance doesn't just happen with Russia. It happens with agents of other countries as well. There are lots of countries around the world. Lots of countries have agents here. There, so all sorts of conversations could have been surveilled. And Trump campaign officials could have been caught up in that, too. So we have to look at each incident no, of unmasking. No, but you're, what and you're you have to apply the two, two criteria no, but, that I mentioned you're, But it's not simply about the unmasking. It's the fact of the spying. It's the fact that during a presidential campaign, the Obama administration was spying on the people around Donald Trump. And again, we're reporting today it was not all about Russia. So that's obviously a mystery we haven't solved. But I'm just saying, not the legal questions. Everything is legal in Washington, as you know. Everything is legal. NSA collects everything, and it's legal. Fine. Is it ethical? Is it moral? Would you want it to happen to you? I do not agree with the premise that the Obama administration was spying on the Trump campaign. This was incidental collection that was part of the normal surveillance that goes on. This surveillance oh. actually started under the Bush administration. Oh. President Bush the incidental administration collection. started this So basically what you're saying, so under the Trump administration, let's say we find out virtually every leader in Congress speaks to officials from foreign governments all the time. Let's just pick Chuck Schumer. We could pick any of them. Sure. And we're going to spy on the government officials with whom we know Chuck Schumer speaks. And, oh, my gosh, we just collected confidential information on Chuck Schumer. And then we're going to pass that up to chain and to various intelligence agencies, State Department, and then we're going to leak it to the press. Is that okay? But you're putting this backwards. We are surveilling foreign agents of foreign countries, especially foreign countries that happen to be enemies of the U.S. or pose a threat to the U.S. If someone like Chuck Schumer happens to talk to those people, that information is going to be collected. Now, unless but Chuck Schumer is engaging in improper activities or we suspect Chuck Schumer to be involved in criminal activity, his name should remain masked unless we have to know his name to understand the intelligence. But why now, would my Susan guess is Rice there were lots of conversations that were surveilled that involved Trump campaign officials that were not unmasked, but certain but, 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 ones but, okay. were unmasked. I, I, I've heard this explanation from the very beginning. This is just what we do. It's totally cool. But wouldn't someone inside the Obama White House with deep political experience and knowledge, or maybe Susan Rice, who's one of the president's closest political advisors and friends, say, wait a second, this guy's running a campaign as a Republican for president. Maybe we should pull back. Now, it's being reported tonight by Sarah Carter at Circa 
that according to NSC records, her interest in the surveillance began in July when he got the nomination and accelerated throughout the election cycle till November. That looks political to me. Doesn't well, it to you? I mean, you're insinuating that's why Susan Rice not did this. Insinuating. You I'm asking look... why in the world could she possibly be unmasking the names of people in a campaign against her preferred candidate? Well, Tucker, put this in context. We know that Russia was engaging in hacking in the U.S. Oh, in order to interfere with the election. Well, we we do know said that. All 17 of our intelligence uh -huh. agencies have said that Russia so was engaging in hacking. For that? And that hacking no, wait, started no, wait, no, no, before stop. You, July. Stop, stop. You, you brought this up and you act as if we all know this. And I don't think we all do know this, actually. Because for all the evidence that's been thrown out there and all the leaking, the underlying evidence of the alleged crimes that justify all of this spying, they're being close held by the Obama people. You saw today an Obama official on television saying, I can't discuss the underlying evidence. Why is that when they can discuss everything else? What is this underlying evidence we all assume exists? What is this? Based on well, no official with classified information can discuss that classified oh, really? information. So well, you tell, tell that to Mike Flynn. Well, if you, you want to talk about Mike Flynn, I mean, Mike Flynn lied, really to, saying, Mike Flynn lied to Vice President Pence oh, about the nature oh, so of his conversation Pence is now a with the ambassador. And you get to reveal confidential information if you lie to Mike Pence? No, like, that was what? improper. And, and I'm glad you brought this up because there is yeah. a, there's a fourth phase to this, which is some of this information, including the fact that people were unmasked, was leaked. The fact that that was leaked, that is improper. And I agree with okay, you but David, that those who leaked information, the those who leaked information know. probably broke the law, okay. and they should be investigated okay, but too. What's this but about? That's no, no, less no, no. What's this about? I'll tell you what it's about. We all assume that we know Russia hacked the election. And I'm just asking you, why has not one person, not one, and I do this every single night, characterized what exactly that means? I'm getting very frustrated. I don't know what it means to hack an election. I don't know exactly what they did that would constitute a crime so severe that you'd have to spy on the Trump campaign to prove it. Tucker, what is that They evidence? hacked into the DNC's emails, and they leaked those emails out in a strategic really? way to impact then the election. Then why and won't all of our you know intelligence that? How agencies... How do you know that? Because every single one of our intelligence agencies have said that. Director Comey has said that. Oh, Clapper they said, has said that. that. They, they said have that. All no, said actually, that. then... And if you don't maybe trust you, them, maybe you can that's answer, a different Maybe story. you can answer this question. I asked the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff of Burbank, California, can you look me straight in the face and say that you have evidence that the Russian government hacked John Podesta or the DNC email accounts? And he declined to do that. So I just want to know, unless you and I have to go on faith, we have to trust politicians in a political system on faith, why don't we get some evidence that any of this actually happened? Why don't we all have to sort of nod and say, oh, yeah, it must have happened because, like, the Washington Post says it happened. Where's the evidence? I don't know why Adam Schiff would tell you that. Maybe because the information he no, knows what is he classified. Didn't tell me. But all of our intelligence agencies have reported that Russia did hack into the DNC emails. If you talk to DNC officials, they'll also tell you they knew within a few days after their email system had been hacked that it was Russia. They hired that experts. That it was the, the Russian government. knew it was it was that, it, let me the just Russian say, government and let me agents just say, of the Russian government. Me, and if you don't care about that, then oh, you're, but I do. Then, I care then, enough to ask real you're questions. You're not worried I'm, about the sanctity no, of our well, democracy, slow, slow which down. Russia. I care enough to ask real questions because I have learned in 30 years here: don't take it on faith. Get the facts. And I'm I agree. Wanting, and I'm waiting for a single fact, just one, from any of these fabled 17 intelligence agencies. How about Coast Guard intelligence? They're one of the agencies you're referring to. Maybe they could come on the show and give me just one scintilla of evidence that the Russian government, not some Russian, but the Russian government of Vladimir Putin broke into John Podesta's emails. Well, that's, for the express purpose of getting Donald Trump Then I'm sure Trump you would agree president. with me that we need a special commission to investigate we don't. a neutral. Fair commission, and if, it's just and, a talking and I, and point. Why wouldn't about, you agree with that? How about people? Don't like, you believe this is important? You, I know you don't think it happened, but don't I'm you think it's important? I'm not saying it didn't happen. Okay? I'm merely saying if we're going to destroy the lives of people and surveil American citizens, we're going to break the basic bond of trust between government and citizen. They're watching me without my knowledge. Look at my email, listening to my phone calls. Whoa! Because we need to get the bottom of this Russia thing. I'm just asking for one person to give me one piece of evidence that this Russia thing actually happened, and nobody will. And that's very telling, don't you think? Well, the evidence is coming out slowly. Well, where is it? But what We've we... got two intel committees who are supposed to be in charge of this stuff, and they haven't provided anything for the public to assess. Why? Senator Mark Warner is the ranking member aware. on Senate Intelligence. He said last week that he's reviewed a lot of information. It gives him a great concern. He thinks this is the most important thing he has ever I'm sure, worked on. I'm sure he believes that. Now, take, but again, for the third time, there are... The, 
No Republican. I'm not flacking for the Republicans. But let me take they the Republican. haven't either. And but I just want that fact. And I'm just surprised you, let me tell you what a Republican you wouldn't says. be a little more skeptical and ask for some facts to back up Can these I tell you allegations. what a Republican says? Senator McCain, the chairman of the Armed Services Committee, a Republican, says we need a special commission to investigate this in a well, fair, I'm, I'm glad that Senator neutral McCain feels that way. way. But I'm saying as take, a co-equal citizen of this country. Why not take his recommendations for that? You're a great journalist. Oh, oh, so you're, you're asking saying, the right questions. Because I'm a journalist. And, and you're skeptical, I, but you would recognize that journalists oh, need, John to, need to investigate this, right? It's important right. enough that we should investigate it right. and get the answers that right. you don't think we so have yet. So if John McCain says it, then we all have to sort of nod in bovine assent. And be That's like, not oh what my I God. said. Well, I think it is. That and I am a journalist, and all I'm asking for is one piece of evidence that the core crime occurred, that the crime being used to justify spying on American citizens. And I think as a liberal, you would say, nobody, hey man, I'm concerned about spying on American nobody, citizens. Nobody, even most Republicans, denied that a crime occurred. Most Republicans Russia thought hacked they into, were weapons Russia of mass destruction into, in Iraq. Russia so hacked like, into DNC's emails. That is a crime. Hacking is a crime. We also know yeah. they were engaging in other activities Prove to try it. and interfere Prove with it. our election. And what's important is we protect the sanctity of our democracy. I couldn't agree more. And what I'm saying as a journalist in American is give me some evidence or stop talking. That's my view. Great to see you, David. Thank you. Thank you.